it's really a pleasure uh, to introduce Leo Cochado. Uh, I'm so glad that you accepted our invitation, Leah. So Leah Cochado is a lecturer of English at Our Lady at the Lake University in San Antonio, Texas, and a Chicana poet from the borderlands of South Texas. She has a passion for teaching the colonial and also other doing modes of writing such as as autostudia theory, magical thinking, and shadow work. She has begun her PhD studies in literature, rhetoric and composition, and pedagogy last fall, 2021, at the University of Houston. She writes through the eyes of a Plantera, a woman who is constantly crossing emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual borders and lives between the cracks of worlds. As a Tahana, she inscribes her culture in Amor for Sangronas and Poderosas into her work and describes herself as a storyteller of truth, shadow work and light. Her work has been featured in Boundless 2020 and anthology of the Rio Grande Valley International Poetry Festival, The Thing Itself Journal, and Making Face, Making So, Making Face for Chicanas, Traumatic Narratives, Autostudia Teoria as Method and Genre. Within the Texas State University's ALCAC database collections, her commissioned uh, her commissioned works include Every Child Flies and her Unheard Symphony. Leah has presented her research over Chicana feminist literature and Anzal Dua modes of writing at conferences such as the Society for uh, Multi Ethnic Literature of the United States Texas Medieval Association the Sandra Cisnero Scholarly Symposium and the La Chola Conference. Thank you so much, Leia. Thank you for, uh, thank you for that wonderful introduction and I'm so happy to be here. Um, hello everyone, y buenos dias. I am so honored to be a keynote speaker at the first international symposium on the writings of Gloria Anzaldúa. Thank you to the committee members for inviting me to speak at such an important and wonderful event. And thank you all for being here today and for taking the time to recognize and honor the teachings and writings of Gloria Anzaldúa. Today, we honor Gloria Anzaldúa's memory and scholarship. La Maestra was a revolutionary. She was the master storyteller and she encouraged us all to find and tell our own stories. And she paved the way for so many of us inside and outside of academia. Her scholarship has impacted women of color, the queer, the marginalized, the oppressed, and those of us who felt we had no voice. But through Anzaldúa's writings, we felt seen, we felt heard. And perhaps for many of us, we found the strength to make our own voices heard. Muchas gracias, Gloria Anzaldúa. So today I will be discussing only one of the many ways Anzaldúa has impacted me as a Chicana, as a scholar, as a survivor of sexual assault, and as a mestiza rhetorician. <clears throat> Gloria Anzaldúa coined the term um, autohistoria teoría, which we've already been discussing in today's conference. I, that's amazing. I love it. Um, so she coined, she coined uh, the term Alto Historia Teoria uh, as a method for writing about the self and intersecting cultures. And that is the theoretical framework in which I ground my own work in theories. So I would like to begin with an excerpt from my master's thesis in which I wrote through what Anzaldúa called my mind's eye and conducted shadow work. Before I begin, however, uh, I need to define some important terms related to Auto Historia Teoria as a methodology. So first there's shadow work. 
and shadow work is the process of excavatory deep thinking to unearth painful and traumatic parts of our memories and identities. And next there's magical thinking. Auto Historia Teoria must employ magical thinking, which is neither understood nor honored in academia. So magical thinking allows the auto historian to enact and decolonial processes of writing when she evokes material and spirit-based approaches to thought and imagination. So decolonial processes of writing include, but are not limited to ritual, chant, incantation, talking to plants, the burning of incense, the creation of an alter ego as a reflection of self, um, crystals as sources of energy, et cetera. So like many writers, I have uh, developed a routine that must be done in order to shift my mind into my work. And I call this my ritual, and it is a necessary process to undergo when I compose auto historias. So I invoke my Naguala, whom I call Querida, and I burn white sage, I close my eyes and I listen to rain, I breathe deeply in and out, I begin to carve my words into a stone tablet. If the audience is willing to follow me down the strange and dark paths, you know, that come from shadow work and magical thinking, I will now begin with an excerpt from my own auto historia titled Lloronas, Gritonas, and Sangronas, an auto historia teoría and which engages in mixed genres such as poetry, creative nonfiction, and critical social cultural analyses. Prologue. In the upcoming weeks, we will begin fleshing out our autoethnographies. We will start with a central memory and slowly build from there. Please be ready and bring a copy of your first draft next class, said my professor. The candles are lit, incense sticks are burning, one warm yellow lamp is bent over my desk and there is a sound of ambient music and light rain softly playing from my laptop. The ritual is complete. I can now close my eyes and begin to breathe deeply. What is to come will not be welcome, but it will be necessary to embrace. I don a cloak of determination and protectiveness and wrap it around me. I lift my shoulders back, breathe in and out. I open myself up to my center myself and let out she who is my primordial and powerful guide. I call her querida. She only comes out when I have to journey to the dark recesses of my mind, recall and write the traumatic things that I see. She is my spirit guide, protector and healer to the wounds that come with shadow work. Querida is an embodiment of my mother, my grandmother, my great grandmother and all my female ancestors whose blood temper and passion run through my veins. Breathe in and out. Querida takes me to a beach. The sky is a deep blood orange hue and is speckled with pinks and purples. I sit on the shore and she squats beside me as we wait. She has a sphere resting by her side. Her gaze is fixated on the swelling crests of water coming rapidly towards us. Breathe in and out. I let the images come to me in waves. Memories splash into the shores of my mind. Slowly they recede, then another takes its place, and another, and another. I hear Querida's fear begin to trace the words on the sand, and I write. <clears throat> the Ten Commandments of Marianismo. Number one, don't forget the place of the woman. Number two, don't give up your traditions. Number three, don't be an old maid, independent, or have your own opinions. Number four, don't put your needs first. Number five, don't wish for anything but to be a housewife. Number six, sex is to make babies, not for pleasure. Number seven, don't be unhappy with your man, no matter what he does to you. Number eight, don't ask for help. Number nine, don't discuss your personal problems outside of the house. And in number 10, don't change. Passos. The woman takes her first few steps and immediately hears shouts of anger coming from down the path. She instinctively takes a step back, faltering, unsure, calculating. 
Wells of anguish are carried on the wind and fall upon the ears of the woman. This gives her incentive and courage to go onwards, trying to find those who still need help unraveling. They are the voices of anguish the wind carried to her. She knows that. The woman walks anew, ignoring the hum of angry voices getting louder with each step. Llorona, Tritona, Sangrona, the angry voices shout at her. She smiles and shouts defiantly to them, Ike, and thinks, man, this is crazy. So, Auto Historia and Auto Historia Teoria were created by Gloria Anzaldúa to provide a methodology and genre for Chicanas' narratives, thoughts, and perceptions free from Western conventions of autobiogra autobiography and theory. So as a methodology and genre, Auto Historia Teoria takes theorizing the personal to expose the limitations in the existing paradigms and create new stories uh, such as healing, self-growth, cultural critique, and individual and collective transformation. While autoethnography, testimonio, and auto historia teoria may serve as powerful modes of self-cultural understanding and epistemology and have similar approaches, there are still nuanced differences between their methodologies. To be clear, these differences are as simple as autoethnography being named in English rather than in Spanish. While some may argue that the naming of a genre doesn't hold much relevance, I would argue otherwise. In giving a genre a name that encompasses one's origins, language, and identity, it opens up a broader and more comfortable platform for the historically oppressed, uh, whose oppression may stem from the English language. So Auto Historia Teoria as a method, and even a tentative one, made it possible for me to peel back you know, thick layers of my surrounding cultures that involved my identity as a survivor of sexual assault. So before I began this research, I would only allow myself to acknowledge partial truths about what had happened to me and about my family, fearing the consequences of shedding light to the actual reality. I allowed myself to believe the dominant narrative that it was the victim's fault for what had happened to her. I had been overwhelmed with shame, embarrassment, and anger. Auto Historia Teoria allowed me to investigate further rather than keeping then sweeping my emotions and memories under the rug as per tradition. As I began my investigation, I developed a new sense of purpose and I asked myself, you know, like, what am I ashamed of? Why should I be embarrassed and called a sinvergüenza by oppressive forces in my culture? I was in a constant cycle of self-reflexivity and mining the earth of my mind as I conducted shadow work. And during shadow work, I would at times sit and reflect over my painful memories, even the happier ones that were tainted by a child's anxiety and fear. It was as if I were holding these memories in my hands while I examined them. And some of the memories were so uncomfortable and raw that I had to step back and examine from afar. However, the process of shadow work proved to be illuminating and edifying to my research. As my Auto Historia Teoria has proven. So, some may argue that shadow work is just another term for the process of conducting constant reflexivity found in other autobiographical modes of inquiry, such as, you know, autoethnography specifically. And I would say, yes, that's, that's correct. But even so, what makes shadow work a unique component to Auto Historia Teoria is that it reinforces the language and terminology that is not captured by westernized processes of autobi autobiographical forms of inquiry, however nuanced they may be. So simply having the term shadow work within Auto Historia Teoria's methodology captures the solemnness and spirituality unique to a decolonialized method of inquiry belonging to women of color. In this case, and for the purposes of my research, uh, I speak about Chicanas specifically. So through my research, I learned more about myself, my family, and my Chicano culture in 16 weeks than I had as uh, being a member of these different cultures all my life. So uh, I was, as scholar Anna Louise Keating says, shifting my perception and in turn, shaping the stories I perceived about myself and my cultures. So what are the implications of Auto Historia Teoria you know, for the Chicana population within 
writing with writing and identity. So Auto Historia Teoria has the potential to carve out rhetorical spaces within rhetoric and writing studies for Chicanas. So now that I have demonstrated a little bit of my Auto Historia, um, how my Auto Historia Teoria allows a Chicana from the Texas-Mexico border to have rhetorical independence and enact by cultural nuances, I will explain the importance of writing and identity for Chicanas using Auto Historia Teoria as a vessel of representation. So as such, um, Ansel Dua's book, Luz and Lo Oscuro, is accumulation of her philosophical and theoretical perspectives and contextualize her theories of weaving together Mexicana, Chicana, indigenous, femin feminist, queer, Tejana, and esoteric perspectives. She discusses identity politics, globalization, decolonization, Marxism and fe feminism through a mestiza consciousness, such as her Nepantla theory, which I heard we were we were talking about that earlier to do today. So Nepantla is when one is caught between two worlds and two realities. You know, Anzal Dua calls those who are called who are caught in Nepantla Neplanteras, the in-betweeners, and uh, who are supreme border crossers and act as intermediaries between cultures and their various versions of reality. So she plays with different forms of self-identities uh, self and dismantled worldviews, such as Auto Historia Teoria. Nepatla is a key feature within my own Auto Historia Teoria as a Chicana from Texas who has embodied both indigenous and westernized practices. Nepatla is a key aspect of my identity and writing. And so to further expand on the concept of Auto Historia Teoria for my audience, there is a difference between the terms Auto Historia and Auto Historia Teoria. Auto Historia acts as a genre and focuses on the personal life story. That is the narrative. While Auto Historia Teoria describes a relational form of autobiographical writing that includes both life story and self-reflection on the storytelling process. So Auto Historia Teoria serves as the analysis and evaluation of the writer's Auto Historia, participating in a meaning making activity and is the methodological process of Auto Historia. So um, in her essay, Gloria E. Anzaldúa's Auto Historia Teoria as an Epistemology of Self-Knowledge and Ignorance, Andrea J. Pitts proposes that Auto Historia Teoria is characterized by several important features. Auto Historia Teoria is collaborative, sensually embodied, and productive of critical self-reflection, which can be both harmful and enabling. When the auto historian begins to evaluate and connect meaning from her auto historia to a culture, she risks being consumed by negative recollections from the past, especially if those memories are traumatic. What happens then may result in new ways of knowing. An, epistem an epistemological approach that can serve the writer as well as the reader. And Anzaldúa believed the writer and the reader could never be separated. So it serves them in understanding and evaluating various self-identities and worldviews. By employing excavatory recollections of traumatic events in the auto historian's life, they enact what Keating and Bapichara call shadow work and magical thinking both methodological steps that differ in some ways from methods common to autoethnography and testimonio. So shadow work is the process of excavatory deep thinking to unearth painful and traumatic parts of our memories and identities. In addition, this term shadow work, Keating and Batichara claim that auto historia teoria must employ magical thinking, again, which is neither understood nor is it honored within academia. So magical thinking, allows the auto historian to enact in decolonial processes of writing when she evokes material and spirit-based approaches to thought and imagination um, that go against traditional Western modes of writing that favor logos according to positivist perspectives. So decolonial processes of writing that magical thinking may call upon can be a meditated prayer or ritual a, uh, a process that the Alu historian must undergo before beginning excavatory thinking. Another example is the creation of an alter ego 
such as I do when writing my Auto Historia Teorias, whom I have called Querida. And so Dua calls this a Naguala, which she calls her Musa Bruja. Um, she does mention this in Borderlands La Frontera. Um, she calls her Musa Bruja to croon to her the words and ideas to write Antigua Mi Diosa. So according to Anzal Dua, Naguala is the feminine form of Nagual, which derives from the Nahua tradition. So there's no correct way to enact magical thinking, and it has no specific methodology, which inherently makes this method unconventional within a positivist perspective. Thus, the creation of Auto Historias involve interconnections between the physical and spiritual realms. Shadow work and ritualistic components which have all originated from women of color, making Auto Historia Teoria a prime and opportunistic approach to decolonial processes and methods of writing. My interest in Anzaldúa's Auto Historia Teoria prompted me to further explore her other theories such as Nepantla and her spiritual activism, which I believe is a key component in Auto Historia Teoria. So by the time I discovered Anzaldúa's theory on spiritual activism, I was already incorporating bits and pieces of my own spiritual activism and ritual into my writing. Spiritual activism, as defined by Ana Luis Keating, uh, is a visionary, experientially based epistemology and ethics, a way of life they call to action. It was a validating and emotional moment when I came across scholarship discussing Anzaldúa's spiritual activism through writing specifically. In El Mundo Zurdo, the vision, Anzaldúa explains, we, the woman here, take a trip back to the self, travel to the deep core of our roots to discover and reclaim our colored souls, our rituals, our religion. We reach a spirituality that has been hidden in the hearts of the oppressed people under layers of traditional God worship. Our spirituality does not come from outside ourselves. It emerges when we listen to the small, still voice within us, which can empower us and create actual change in the world. Spiritual activism is the outcome of transformational self-growth and self-reflection combined with the purpose of creating material change through extroversive, empathetic, and compassionate acts. Anzal Dua Keating explains, I advocate that there is a difference, uh, there is strength in difference. In a visionary place where people from diverse backgrounds with diverse needs and concerns coexist and work together to bring revolutionary change. And to do so, one must call upon one's spiritual activism, which has its source within an individual, an individual scarred by oppressive contacts, and channel that energy into resisting various forms of oppression. So in my research, Hegemonic discourses act as those various forms of oppression. Spiritual activism, to be clear, is viewed as an unorthodox method within academia, as it is a call to action for social change within existing paradigms that limit new modes of knowledge, such as hegemonic discourses do. So spiritual activism requires vulnerability and interconnectedness between the self and other, nos y otras, and an understanding that the spiritual components of life cannot be separated from writing. So ultimately, says Anne Zaldúa and Keating, spiritual activism means a form of self-sacrifice, such as inscribing trauma, you know, unearthing dark memories, and calling upon our vulnerability, which can be the source of one's power. Spiritual activism is imperative to Auto Historia Teoría as it is the ultimate step within the proposed methodological outline in my theory. Spiritual activism acts as a call to action through outward directed compassionate acts, such as writing Auto Historia Teoria as one way of achieving the last step of this holistic approach. Anzal Dua did not leave a concrete methodology of Auto Historia Teoria, as many of us here probably know, nor would she as she believed that Auto Historias constantly changed and shifted and grew with new knowledge. So my processes are not definite methods, um, but rather a loose outline of how Auto Historia Teoria may be accomplished for Chicanas whose truth is situated in trauma. I often ask myself if this was okay and circled back and forth between offering a loose outline 
to guide other auto historia theoristas and abandoning the concept completely. However, I believe that just as auto ethnography and testimonio have the power to create change and discover cultural truths, so does auto historia teoria, and arguably even more so. So through descriptions found in Karen S. Neal's essay, The 1001 Peace Nights of Florian Zaldúa, Auto Historia Teoria at Florida Atlantic University, I was able to piece together a tentative outline of how Anzaldúa taught her own students to write Auto Historia Teoria. It was actually pretty cool. So the following methodology um, is based on the information presented in Neil's essay, right? So for the purposes of my research, I focus on a methodology of Auto Historia Teoria that Chicanas specifically can look to and utilize as they navigate their stories of trauma. Through email correspondence with Ana Luis Keating, I have come to learn that auto historia teoria must engage with magical thinking and shadow work, which is present as I describe the space stages of fleshing out my auto historia teoria and the space stages of conocimiento. However, Keating also made it clear that Anzaldúa is extremely generous with her theories. And even the process of painful self-inscription, even through the process of painful self-inscription, there is always a meaningful outcome available to all who wish to undergo the path of conocimiento. My auto historia teoria process was broken into stages to be completed over 16 weeks. And because there's no readily available method of inquiry for auto historia teoria, I compiled the following space stages and methodology according to sur the surrounding research I was able to find. And to be clear, I labeled the following space stages because they are not necessarily steps that can be done linearly, but rather one can be in two space stages at the same time. So these space stages included two heuristic exercises, an auto-ecological analysis, um, an analysis of the writing process, an affirmation of spiritual activism, and finally, synthesis into a complete auto historia teoria. As I gathered data by completing these space stages, I followed Anzaldúa's seven space stages of conocimiento for analysis and interpretation of my data, as it was assembled throughout the process of composing my auto historia teoria. So I am aware that by proposing a methodology and genre, I may be risking reinforcing prevailing modes of knowledge by suggesting a more con concrete methodology of auto historia teoria. However, I move forward with hope and care that as I come into new ways of knowing, and new perspectives, and new orderings of experiences, I may, as Anzaldúa does, honor her methodological processes by utilizing conocimiento and magical thinking as I use dreaming or ensueños, the making of images, to figure out what's wrong, foretell current and future events, and establish hidden, unknown connections between lived experiences and theory. One of these images in the making is in Auto Historia Teoria when it is being written into speaking a reality. I underwent the methodological space stages as I processed and followed this tentative method of inquiry for my own Auto Historia Teoria. The following are the space stages I followed in crafting my Auto Historia Teoria as I shifted between relational, self-reflective, cultural, political paradigms, as well as storytelling, myth, and transformation while recalling writing, analyzing, interpreting, and consulting Anzalduin scholarship. This research is an outward act of bridging trust, understanding, and empathy. Through my narrative, I hope to bring awareness about the challenges that survivors of sexual assault and abuse must face within oppressive cultural norms. This research came into being when I listened to the small, still voice within me, which can empower us to create change in the world so as a member of multiple cultures, which oftentimes intersect, usually for the greater good, but sometimes, sometimes not, those instances of harmful ideologies, though few, cause devastating results within the individual, as well as others who get caught up in oppressive cultural norms. It's all too easy to appease the dominant culture's values and beliefs, especially within academia where the personal is believed to stay out of the classroom and research. However, those pressures to conform to the dominant discourse have failed. 
By writing my Auto Historia Teoria, for that matter, my unorthodox research and evocative narrative have already begun carving a space for itself as it will soon be embedded in the larger narrative of the academy, quite literally. I take it upon myself to do everything I can to rise up and meet positivist views on what real research should look like. Like emphasizing that Chicanas' and Latines' traumatic narrative should not be shunned from academia, but embraced as an epistemological method of learning how to trust, understand, and empathize with one another. I will encourage and support other Chicanas and Latinas to begin laying the foundation for this bridge and to begin to walk into unknown and scary territory, to write, to feel, to share their own traumatic auto historia teorias. And yes, there will be pain, and perhaps there will be days when the shadow work gets to be too much, but there will also be beauty, and you will discover things about yourself you didn't know were there. There will be joy in the tears, and there will be that sense of relief when you tug on your own red yarn for the first time. It will unravel and so will you, and so will your auto historia. As a Neplantera who has the advantage and responsibility of having access to separate viewpoints, I use this research and my auto historia teoria as a bridge and as an outward act of spiritual activism to promote, to promote narrative spaces for Chicanas, uh, Chicanas' traumatic auto historia teorias. It can be said that this research in and of itself is a small step towards social justice and transformation. The very fact that this research exists and is taking space in academia's shelves is, I believe, a demonstration of my conocimiento acting on spiritual activism through an outward act. So Auto Historia Teoria inherently employs a decolonial writing, pro decolonial writing processes such as magical thinking, shadow work, and spiritual activism, to name a few main components which are neither understood nor honored in academia. I knew that undertaking this project uh, with a seemingly unorthodox approach in presentation, the theory and rhetoric would present numerous challenges, especially spearheading my research and my Auto Historia Teoria as an exemplar. It was frightening to say the least. Uh, for example, even as I began writing my Auto Historia Teoria as an autoethnography, a genre that also exemplifies the evocative narrative, I was still unsure uh, how well my story like fit into the rest of my classmates' autoethnographies. And even now, though I base my research primarily on Anselduin theory and scholarship, I worry that it won't be enough to gain academic merit from scholars in the field. Then there is also the matter of my career. I don't like the idea of my of having my trauma out in the open, you know, just as much as anyone else would. It makes me uneasy. However, I understand the importance that one person can make when they speak out, write, and break the cultural norms that allow others to allow others a place at the table. I've seen this example in my mentors, professors, uh, colleagues, and friends, and so I will endure exposure and vulnerability in order to help others with theirs. The implications of establishing Auto Historia Teoria as a method of inquiry and genre, even though the methodology is a fluid outline, may have some serious consequences within academia. Some effects may include, but are not limited to, advances in rhetoric and writing, st writing studies in resistance rhetoric, trauma rhetoric, borderland rhetoric, mestiza rhetoric, and marginalized rhetoric, as well as further research and scholarship opportunities in Anzalduan scholarship. Borderland studies, trauma studies, feminist studies, gender studies, and queer studies, to name a few. Including Auto Historia Teoria and Rhetoric and Writing Studies may also prove to be useful in pedagogy as Anzaldu and writing processes encourage a desire to challenge hegemonic institutions like schools or even society while allowing students to finally identify with a narrative familiar to them. Particularly, within multicultural pedagogies. So perhaps the most exciting and crucial possibility uh, to building upon the aforementioned is the vast opportunities for theoretical frameworks that Auto Historia Teoria as method, in, as method of inquiry and genre can tap into for she who yearns to know more about her cultures and about her writing and about herself. So as I've mentioned before, academia can be an unforgiving space if it allows one that much. And high theory is reserved for the dominant culture. Allowing Auto Historia Teoria into academia's walls would mean 
challenging institutionalized discourses for Chicanas, it would mean being suspicious of the dominant culture's interpretation of our experiences, um, of the way they read us, right? So by acknowledging Chicanas' um, auto historia teorias as theory and Latinas, it would mean that she could and will rewrite history uh, using race, class, gender, and ethnicity as categories for analysis, theories that cross borders, that blur boundaries. Although I believe the field of rhetoric and writing studies could claim auto historia teoria as a loose method of inquiry and genre for Chicanas' traumatic narratives, I would be lying if I said it would be an easy thing to do. It is my esperanza, like many mujeres de color who are also theorists and scholars in the field and in their respective concentrations, that we uh, de-academize uh, de theory to connect the community to the academy. Auto Historia Teoria may very well be that medium if academia chooses to see its potential and value. For the women of color who has been gagged and disempowered by theories can also be loosed and empowered by theories. And in doing so, bring her own approaches and methodologies to transform this theorizing space. Auto Historia Teoria, further utilized within rhetoric and writing studies, may act as that rhetorical platform for Chicanas' traumatic narratives to just be. And through Alto Historia Teoria, the woman of color doesn't have to worry about performing her gender, race, or sexuality, um, nor does she constantly have to appease the dominant discourse of what good scholarship and high theory should look like. The Alto Historia Teorista can freely write and say, we are ready for change. Let us link hands and hearts together, find a path through the dark woods step through the doorways between worlds, leaving ways for others to follow, build bridges, cross them with grace, and claim these puentes as our home. Si se puede, que sea así, so be it. Estamos listas, vámonos. Now let us shift. Entonces, adelante mujer, que hay puentes para construir. And I would like to finally, I would like to thank the first international symposium on the writings of Gloria and Zaldua, the Eurox committee, once again, for inviting me to uh, be here today. And I thank you for the wonderful opportunity to continue advocating and exploring the work of La Maestra. You know, thank you for honoring her memory and for creating this space of conocimiento and entendimiento so now I say to the audience and to everyone who's listening, you know, um, adelante, you know, let us eagerly go forward to create new worlds and new theories and new bridges for all of us and for the future generations to come. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much. Thank you, Laia Cochado. It is a pleasure uh, to see you and to hear you. Well, when I first read you, I got so impressed by your writing, but yours, because it's, it's sensitive, it is uh, really rich. And at the same time, your writing cuts us and touches la herida. So I'm really, really glad that we called you. I'm really happy. Uh, for this opportunity to um, to hit you. So I would like to ask you a question. Uh, eu posso começar? Eu vou fazer uma pergunta para ela. Posso começar, né? Uh, so thinking of, or thinking about your ritual, how was uh, the practice of including yourself? Because it's, you make, you make it easier for us to understand how uh, our historia, theoria construction is, because you are including yourself and you are talking about your traumas. So I'm wondering how was or how it is for you the practice of including yourself in your writing 
and talking about your local, your own histories, your deep traumas, confronting, yeah, facing las heridas, sus heridas, which include las heridas uh, of your compañeras too. Thank you. So uh, you're asking me how did I um, include the self when inscribing my traumatic events? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, sure. exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, uh, it wasn't easy. You know, it wasn't easy. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, you know, earlier, it took me to. It took me finding Anzaldúa's words and her her ideas and her thoughts. You know what precious um, material we had here that she left behind for us. Um, and really, it it took me finding that that ritual, like that that inner self. You know, I had to really meditate and focus on that small still voice that Antel Dua tells us all of us have. We all have that small voice inside of us. If we just need to be quiet and listen to it. I had to do that and that was really hard. <laughs> um, but I, um, it, yeah, it took me, it took deep reflexivity. It took going back into, you know, the shadow work and analyzing these, these traumatic events that happened um, that happened to me and um, it basically in describing the self it's never like an easy question to answer like how do you do it you know because it it's uh, I think for everybody the process is different you know um, for you the process is going to be a little bit different from mine um, but one thing some things that did help me to inscribe myself into you know these this narrative uh, were, believe it or not, lighting incense sticks, listening to nature. You know, Gloria Anzaldúa is very adamant about our humans' connections to nature. So getting out, um, listening to my heridas abiertas, right? Listening to my wounds. Because for the longest time, it's like, no, 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 no. I don't want to pay attention to you, no. But it's actually sitting there and being really quiet and listening to your heridas because your heridas are, they're still, they're still bleeding. It's just like the border, you know, it's an open wound. And um, just, just listening to yourself and that voice inside of you and trying to find a, a ritual or a way that you can connect to yourself. And I know that's, it's a very, it's a very um, subjective answer, like I said, because for everyone, it's a bit different. Um, but that's how I, that's how I did it. And mainly using my Nahuala, so an alter ego, such as Querida, which I know you've read my thesis, so you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, so, so Querida was really, she was like my Nahuala and she, just like Anzaldúa had her Musa Bruja, you know, Antigua Mi Diosa, which she talks about in Borderlands La Frontera. Um, I had Querida. So I would have to shift into her, into that perspective begin inscribing traumatic events um, and memories. Oh, thank you so much. We still have um, two or three minutes. Um, mm -hmm. Can I ask another question? Oh, please. Is that yes, right now? Yes, okay. of course. Okay. So Juliana Miranda is asking, uh, she asks, how do you see these bridges being built between Chicanx and other Latinx in the U.S.? That is an excellent question, Juliana. Um, and that's one that we have been trying to figure out for years now. It feels, I was just having this conversation with uh, Dr. Maria Gonzalez here at University of Houston. And it's like, why, like, we need to build more bridges of trust and empathy and understanding between Chicanas and Latinas in the US, right, specifically. Um, I think for us, I think it's, uh, just getting our pride out of the way, you know? Stop trying to outdo each other. Who's more Chicana? Who's more Latina? You know, ah, you know, stuff like that. And it's just like, like, Antel Dua also mentions it. Like, I love, I love mi raza, but sometimes we're the most tapados, you know? 
we're the most we get in our own way and um I think that that's such an important question to ask like how can we how do I see these bridges being built I think throughout the historia teorías you know um and it's a prime example uh you know Dr. Tinoco reached out to me and he was all the way in Brazil and I was all the way over here I was a chicana in the US and that was a bridge and now we're here today you know so I think auto historia teorías are a great way uh, for for us to share our experiences because we're not so different after all, you know. Um, that's one way that I can that I see uh, Chicanas and Lat Chicanx and Lat other Latinxes in the U.S. building bridges. Thank you, thank you so 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 much. I hope that we can continue this conversation. Yeah, after. <laughs> <laughs> so I just would like to thank you. Uh, Carlos, would you like to say anything? What, Professor, Professor Vanya? Yeah, thank yes. you, my friend. Oh, first, Professor Vanya. Sorry, sorry. No, é só um comentário. Eu queria que o João passasse para ela. É, é impressionante, né? É uma tese de doutorado, né? Que ela, que ela fez, né? Eu acredito e que ela trabalha é, é, a partir do discurso da Glória Anzaldúa, é, mobilizando teorias, né? tanto, de, tanto o método, é uma metodologia fronteiriça, né? se assemelha muito ao que o Edgar falou, né? do método fronteiriço, e ela traz esse método aí, né? é muito interessante, e é, uma, e é, um, e é um percurso teórico metodológico né? que ela faz, né? com a escrita da Anzaldúa. É uma epistemologia crítica, né? E ela refaz né, esse percurso tanto da teoria como do método fronteiriço. Eu só quero parabenizá-la, tá? Porque ela tem uma sensibilidade, né, para trazer essas questões aí para nossa pra nossa crítica, né, pra nossa academia. É. Okay? Obrigada. Obrigada. Léa, você compreendeu? Ou... I know that you speak Spanish. It was, it was beautiful. But oh. I only got some few words here and there. <laughs> yeah, she um, was just uh, congratulating you uh, about your work, how you construct the, the method and the genre at the same time. At the same time, so congratulations. Muchísimas gracias. <laughs> Carlos, thank you, Professor Cochado. Thank you very much. Uh, I was just going to to say that we have many people here saying congratulations selena is saying congratulations juliana is saying wonderful uh, uh, michael michel uh, from poland he's saying thank you very much for your talk i enjoyed it a lot and greetings from poland so we are international <laughs> uh, Juliana is saying thank you for answering and for building this bridge towards us and our event here in Brazil. So uh, when you speak, uh, Professor Colchado, you, you are uh, emphasizing what we were uh, discussing before. Uh, we need more bridges. We don't need more walls. We must go on and we must think about ourselves together, always building bridges. That's what we have to do. And you are doing this uh, in your presentation. So thank you very, very much. Thank you all for inviting me again. I'm so honored to be here with all of you. <laughs>